Hello. So, <laughs> can you can you tell me your name and where you're coming from? Yeah, uh, my name is Jeff. Um, I forgot my watch, but I am from San Francisco. Oh, that's that's uh, it. Must be uh, you know in repairs. <laughs> So um, what are you going to talk about? Uh, I'm going to talk about the reactivity system in Vue um, and uh, what I'm calling learning by accident, uh, which is how I learned okay. most of what I know about the reactivity system. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so hi, uh, I'm Jeff. And uh, thanks so much for having me. This has been an amazing conference. Um, so I want to talk to you about uh, the, react the reactivity system in Vue. Uh, and learning by accident, which, as I said, is how I learned about it. Uh, has anyone here ever made a mistake before? Um, I have. Uh, and we're going to call them uh, happy little accidents, um, because I want to take this opportunity to think about uh, these mistakes and these little gotchas uh, that I've run into, that you may have run into as well, in the reactivity system in view, and take them, in, instead of getting angry, Instead of getting upset and like smashing the computer, uh, we're going to take them as an opportunity to learn, right? We're going to take them as an opportunity to say, hey, what is Vue doing for us and why, uh, why did we run into this today uh, as an opportunity to learn more about how it's working under the hood. So that's what uh, hopefully you, you come away uh, a little more knowledgeable about uh, the reactivity system and how it's working under the hood um, as I have through these gotchas. So let's dive into gotcha number one, uh, which is adding and removing properties. Um, so this is probably the one that most of us have run into. Um, I'm going to start by showing you some totally working code. Um, so let's say that you have uh, a simple uh, component with price, quantity. Uh, you want to compute a total out of that, uh, price times quantity, and you want to output that into a template. Great. Pretty straightforward stuff. Um, and it does totally work. Uh, I just didn't have time to throw that on the slide. But you, trust me. Um, and how is this working, right? The view is actually building a dependency tree uh, for us. And uh, when we update, say, price, um, it's going to flow down the dependency tree uh, and update everything as it goes, right? And so. That dependency tree uh, is what gives us, in part, is what gives us this reactivity. Um, let's look at a common gotcha that I've definitely run into, which is uh, let's say we want to fetch the price from an API. We want to maybe do that in a created hook. I've skipped the actual fetching for clarity. But let's say we've got a new price. We want to set it uh, in the created hook. Um, but because we've moved it down from the data uh, to the created hook, uh, this code actually won't work. It won't update when we update this dot price. Um, and why is that, right? So remember uh, that dependency tree, um, Vue's built that for us. Uh, but it's not you know, omnipotent. It doesn't know everything we want to do automatically. We have to tell it. And in this case, we've actually created sort of a dependency island um, with price not being connected to everything else. And when we update it, nothing else knows, knows what to do, right? Um, and how do we actually fix this? So we have to uh, include price in the initial data uh, object. Uh, and so we've all, most of us have probably run into this. What, what was helpful for me is thinking, OK, so uh, I'm annoyed in this moment. But hey, thank you, Vue, uh, for actually building dependency trees for me. Now I know that. Um, and it makes my life better every day. Uh, both knowing it and having it. So uh, I like to focus on the positive there. Um, so let's move on to gotcha number two, uh, which is modifying array indices. Um, something maybe a little less common, um, but a lot of us have probably run into as well. Um, let's look at some more totally working code. So this, this does work. Um, standard to-do list, uh, eat, sleep, and view, obviously. Um, we want to output those as list elements and have a button that uh, adds a to-do, excuse me, adds a to-do, and it does this dot to do's dot push more view because that's what we love here, right? Great. Totally works. Um, 
How about this, though? What if we wanted to actually modify one of those to do elements, right? Uh, we want the, uh, the button to actually update that first to do from eat to coffee because, I mean, coffee's more important than food in my life. Uh, maybe yours as well. Uh, so, but this doesn't work, right? Um, and so let's look at, again, why is that? Why isn't it working? Um, we've got this gotcha, we're frustrated, but let's take a moment to appreciate what Vue's actually doing for us. Um, so when it comes to uh, a lot of what the reactivity system's doing, and this was covered in earlier talks, so hopefully this is familiar, much abbreviated code, uh, but the basics is we've got getters and setters um, on objects that are tracking those changes in dependency trees. Um, those work great, but they don't work for arrays. Those are for objects, right? Um, and so when it comes to arrays, uh, it doesn't happen automatically. But wait, you say, but wait, didn't todos.push work? That doesn't have getters and setters. Uh, and we modified the array, but it still was reactive. It still worked. Um, and so once again, I want to say thanks to Vue, because uh, they've done some work for us. Uh, Vue has actually patched our array methods. Um, so if it's part of that reactivity tree, um, it's finding those arrays and push, pop, shift, unshift, splice, sort, and reverse are patched for you so that if you use those array methods, um, it's actually notifying all of the dependencies there for you. Um, but there are a couple of things that totally aren't patched because they can't be, uh, at least until the next version of Vue. Um, uh, anyway, so if you set uh, an array index or if you set the length, which I've never actually seen done in production myself, but you can do that, uh, those can't be tracked. Um, but again, I take this as an opportunity to say thank you um, for patching my, my array methods. That's really helpful. Um, so if we want to fix the code, uh, there's more about this in the docs, but basically you use these uh, set methods. Um, and that tells Vue to, hey, update the index and also uh, trigger the reactivity system. So our third and last gotcha, uh, relying on immediate DOM updates, right? Um, so here's some more totally working code, an input, and let's say we want a button that focuses on it. A little contrived, but you, I've run into this sort of a thing before in, in bigger use cases. Um, and so it's gonna call focus on that uh, input. Works great. Um, however, let's say we want to both show and focus the input, right? Now what? Um, so we've got this v if and a shown uh, property, and the button's going to do both. It's going to this dot shown equals true, and call focus. Uh, this actually doesn't work, right? But why doesn't it work, right? So here's where you learn about. Uh, asynchronous batching and buffering of DOM updates, um, which are totally awesome. So thank you again, Vue. Uh, it's actually uh, tracking all of those changes that you're making, that you're about to make to the DOM that are implied by these changes in the reactivity system, deduping things and finding the most efficient way to make those updates so that then it can make all the updates in one go in a much more efficient way, right? Um, so it's doing awesome things for us under the hood, and there are just these few little caveats for us. Um, in this case, we can use this next tick to say, after the next tick, when the DOM's been updated, then we want to call focus. And then it should work as we like. Uh, quick note, as you've probably heard before in this conference, uh, proxies are coming, um, and those uh, should pretty much solve gotchas one and two, uh, as far as I understand it. Um, so get on view three, that'll be great stuff. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for listening.